The year's coming to an end and the time has come. That video that tells you the movies I enjoyed most this year. That yearly reminder to my viewers and subscribers exactly who it is they watch. Have I watched every movie in 2023? Not even close. Do I watch every movie in any given year? Absolutely not. But I do a top 10 list nonetheless because I cannot have and you all think I'm some sort of professional. Yes, there were even a couple movies that came out on Christmas, on Christmas Eve and Christmas. And I was really stressing out about it. I was like, okay, on Christmas Eve, maybe I can dip out early on visiting my brother, then watch a movie and do a video on that and work on Christmas Eve. And then on Christmas, I can dip out on family early and then watch another movie and then work on Christmas. I was like, nope. It's done. I'm going to enjoy family time on Christmas Eve and Christmas. Then I'm gonna do my top 10 video and I'm gonna send 2023 packing gone. That's the key to true happiness, my friends. Letting things slip through the cracks and learning to be cool with that. Also, these are not reviews of the movies. I do have reviews of these movies, all but one, all but number 10. We'll get to that in a second. All right, enough of this build up bullshit. You know what to expect from my top 10 videos? We've been at this long enough since there are a few things worse than someone who prattles on too much in the build up of their videos. Let's get to it. My list of my top 10 favorite movies I watched in 2023. Number 10. Number 10 is difficult because I found nine movies I was comfortable with being on this top 10 list. The 10th, I couldn't find a movie I really felt was I didn't feel like it was top 10. So whatever, The Abyss re-release number 10. I'm actually not fucking with you today. A movie that was released in 1989 that was re-released in theaters for one showing on one day. It's number 10 on my top 10 list. Not my first time watching The Abyss. First time watching The Abyss in theaters. As I sat there, I was like, by God, this is better than most movies I watched in 2023. The making of The Abyss is absolutely infamous to say the least, but doesn't change the fact that as I sat there, my old man energy was coming out as I thought, why don't they make them like this anymore? If you haven't seen The Abyss yet, now's the time to do it. It's low key one of Cameron's best. All right, on to the other nine movies, which are actually from 2023. Number nine. A next up still, it gave me the man tears, I'm not gonna lie. Still is a documentary about Michael J. Fox, his life, his career, his Parkinson's, how he's dealt with that. Cause we've all heard stories about Michael J. Fox, the production of Back to the Future, his life, when he started hiding his Parkinson's, it's a different thing to hear him actually talk about it. He seems like a likable dude who happened to find success in that pit of vipers known as Hollywood, who maintains a perseverance and optimism in the face of his disease. It's inspiring. Number eight. Next up, comic book movie fatigue is not a thing because the killer was great. It's actually based on a comic book. A David Fincher film starring Michael Fassbender about an assassin. I mean, that just hooked me right there. You know the thing I love about this movie is it feels like a film that's at the beginning of a filmmaker's career. This movie kind of had the vibe of a young up and coming director from the early 2000s. The director that would have a bright future, that film that would be a cult classic. It had that vibe, but from a seasoned director like David Fincher. Long-winded way of saying David Fincher has not lost a passion. This does feel like a passion project. David Fincher film releases used to be an event. I don't know how this one just kind of snuck onto Netflix, but the dude still got it. We knew he would, but it was refreshing. Number seven. Next up, horror movie of the year for me, absolutely, talk to me. There's a part of me that tries to be conscious of the fact that part of the story of the movie production itself and the team who made it is part of what grips me here. YouTubers making a horror movie that actually ended up being good, I can't help but root for that. Fact is though, the movie was actually good. Not just good, but it was great. In October, people were like, hey, what's a good horror movie? I'm like, talk to me. That's the one. The acting, chills, thrills, creep factor, all there. It's a refreshing spin on something that could have felt cliche, but feels new. and wraps up in a way I felt was actually pretty thought provoking and intriguing. What more do you want? Number six. Next up, well, another monologue about comic book movie fatigue not being a thing because Across the Spider-Verse was also great. These Spider-Verse movies are fantastic. It's also pretty refreshing to see a multiverse movie 
in a world of a lot of multiverse movies, use that multiverse premise in a way that actually serves the plot rather than just being like, hey, nostalgia bait, what can we cram in here? It does have cameos for the sake of people being able to be like, oh, hey, I get that reference. But it was treated as icing on the cake rather than trying to be the whole cake itself. 2023 was definitely the year where I was like, I am officially sick and tired of movies that feel like half of an actual movie because it's part one and well, part two will come out later, I guess. This is the only movie on this list that did that, but that just shows it was in fact that enjoyable. Number five. Next up, Killers of the Flower Moon. When I heard Martin Scorsese was doing a film in 2023, I was like, all right, I'm in. When I heard the premise, I was like, that sounds dark and fucked up. This was an epic, an odyssey, a tragedy. For being, what was it, three and a half hours long? The movie is enormous. Three is the new two in terms of cinematic hours of runtime. This was a movie that had really good time management, I felt. It's a masterwork by a master filmmaker. It's one to remember in 2023. Number four. In a world where recency bias is absolutely a thing, another thing you gotta be conscious of when making these lists. My answer to the Iron Claw is it absolutely deserves to be on this list. This is a heartfelt story, a heart-wrenching story. It's tough to watch, but I don't mind saying it's a necessary watch. The thing I appreciate about movies like this is when they revolve around a sport, but you don't have to be a fan of the sport in order to connect to the story. But everybody in the movie did a great job. In fact, I didn't give everyone their due props, so allow me. Jeremy Allen White, Harris Dickinson, Maura Tierney, Stanley Simmons, Lily James, as well as Zac Efron and Holt McCallney, who I did give props to in my review. Yeah, this one will stick with me for a while. Number three. Oppenheimer had to be on this list when I heard Christopher Nolan's making a movie about J. Robert Oppenheimer. I feel like I, the feeling was unanimous, right? That just sounds like why we go to movies. Turns out when you watch the movie, it is in and of itself a celebration of cinema. The script has flipped. It used to be this movie has so many CGI shots. That's how great it is. Now it's this movie has no CGI shots, even the explosions practical. That's how great it is. Oppenheimer is Christopher Nolan also being a seasoned filmmaker, but making a film that showcases love for cinema as large as you possibly can and as grand scale as you can. Killian Murphy crushed it. The cast was enormous and vast. Robert Downey Jr. and Oppenheimer was kind of like Robert De Niro in Killers of the Flower Moon, where it's like, you don't have to put in this much work. We know what you can do. You could have just phoned it in for a paycheck, but you didn't. This is probably on the technical level, the best movie on this list, but there are other movies that just speak to me personally, and those remain. Number two. All right, we've come to the top two. I'm not gonna lie. I've gone back and forth on the top two. I've swapped them around so many times in making this list, but in reality, I've done the same thing to the top four. They've shuffled all around so much. We'll see how it lands in the final product of this video. As it stands right now, number two, Godzilla minus one. For longtime Godzilla fans, this is probably number one. And you would be right to say so. But for me, I expected nothing out of Godzilla minus one. Godzilla never gripped me. It's just one of those things I missed out on growing up. Then the Americanized Godzilla, Godzilla Kong movies. They've come out and I'm like, okay, well, they happen. And then I watched this and I was like, wow. So this is what Godzilla is supposed to be. I always saw the old Japanese Godzilla movies as cheese. This took all of the cheese out and just made something grand and epic. Humans you actually care about, dealing with struggles that grip you. Also a monster that threatens their lives and ability to rebuild. Another thing I loved about it, it was the people that came together to take out Godzilla. It was on the people to save themselves. How can you not love that underdog story? Yeah, I was impressed. This is the first movie that made me feel like I missed out in not being a Godzilla fan earlier in my life, but such is life. An absolute badass movie of 2023. Number one. And number one, objectively speaking, is probably not better than the previous three that I listed, but I really love me a good ending to a story. So John Wick chapter four. John Wick is proof that you can make a new original IP that's not based off of a comic book and have it be a modern classic. The action sequences clean, the gun love out of control. You know, the thing I have loved about these John Wick movies up through four 
is it hasn't felt like copy and paste. You can only do so many different things when it comes to fighting and shootouts, but every installment feels fresh. It feels different than the previous ones. There's that top-down scene, like I said in my review, it reminded me of Hotline Miami. In a world where action movies are a dime a dozen, John Wick came along and just it gave me something that felt new. John Wick Chapter 4 kept that torch going. It's not just action. It's action with a very specific style. It's stylish, it's classy, slick suits, cool weaponry. And again, I appreciate a story that has the guts to end. So many stories just keep going until they fizzle into obscurity. They limp along until no one cares anymore and it just becomes sad. John Wick Chapter 4, I felt, was a great ending to John Wick's story. I've heard rumors about a five. I don't see how you do a chapter five without ruining John Wick chapter four. So don't do that. It is nearly three hours of violent action movie extravaganza. What can I say? It left me fulfilled. Which is why John Wick chapter four, that's number one in 2023 for me. So that concludes my list of my top 10 favorite movies of 2023. Thank you all for watching this video. And thank you all once again for yet another year of me doing this. I've said it before and I'll say it again. It's 100% true. Without you watching me, there's no me doing this. And this next year in 2024, July 2024, you ready for it? It'll be 15 years of me talking movies on YouTube. That's a bafflingly long time to think about, especially when you're talking about YouTube life for a channel. Like I get it, me, my channel, I'm not for everybody. So I'm glad I continue to work for people who do like my stuff. I'm very conscious of that and very thankful for that. So again, thank you. Thank you for another year. All right, so your top 10 favorite movies of 2023 or five or three, however many you wanna list. Or maybe you just have one favorite, that's cool. Whatever it is, whatever they are, whatever you think, comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you wanna see more, click right here to see more.